the cords. Okay. Um, okay, yes, welcome everyone to the um, Black Business is Rising, How to Do Business with the City series. And as you come in, please have your, your cameras off and um, you know, stay muted. I'll try to catch y'all on my end if that's not the case. Um, but we only have 60 minutes and I'll do some housekeeping. I'll let you quickly let you all know how tonight is gonna go. Um, I think Ms. Reve here is open for Q&A throughout. So you can come off mic um, uh, if once requested, but um, let's get through the, um, the intros, get started and go from there uh, before we do Q&As or anything like that. So um, my name is Tyra Clark. I'll be your moderator for today. This is an inspiring and informative series that we're so grateful uh, you all are able to be a part of. Black Business is Rising, How to Do Business with the City is an online eight-part series lecture um, presented by the Black Leaders Collective, uh, which is centered around conversations that stem from the collective's economic and workforce development action item 1.2. I'll be putting websites and links in the chat um, so kind of just stay aware of what's in the chat to get those links. And I'll, I'll also tell you all how to save the chat so you can keep it for your reference later. Um, the Black Leaders Collective's goal is, uh, through their initiative is to offset the disparities, develop and train competitive Black-led small businesses, and intentionally build, rebuild equity. These conversations will strengthen a strategic roadmap uh, for Black-led orgs uh, that they can utilize to cut out the guesswork, get in the game, and do business with the city, um, state, and on federal levels. So just some insight. Again, like I said, I'll be putting links and more information in the chat. Um, also, be, we'll be putting the series um, timeline in the chat because some folks are confused as to what topic is when and so we'll be going over that, um, but it is an eight part series. It's two a day for four days. So we'll be here till Friday. Um, and today's topic, uh, our 530 topic is how to become a vendor. Um, and it's being presented by Miss the lovely, the wonderful Miss Reve Creighton with the city of Austin purchasing office. Um, just a little background on Miss Creighton. Ms. Creighton leads the Financial Service Help Desk, which includes the city's vendor registration program. She has worked for the city of Austin for nearly 17 years. Just brilliant, love it, way to hang in there. Um, with 13 of those in connection to the vendor reg registration. So um, she's open to answer que questions throughout, but this is only 60 minutes. So um, be mindful of that. You can put your questions in the chat and um, I'll also send you all, direct you all to their website or uh, Ms. Ms. Creighton's email if, if you have some additional questions that don't get answered. Um, but that's it. So glad y'all were able to make it. Y'all are serious. This group <laughs> is not playing, trying to get the goods, the info. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna hand it off to you, my dear Ms. Reve, and I'm gonna pin you to, um, and kind of disappear for a little bit and wrangle the chat. Uh, so let me see where there we go. Oh hey, Ms. Blender, hello. Um, okay, so let me pin you here. Good, and I'm gonna come off mic and I'll pop in if anything you know, um, to stabilize things. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Good evening, everybody. Um, my name's Ray Creighton, as Tyra so delightfully let y'all know. Um, I'm going to take you guys through the vendor registration process um, and also the just a brief overview of how you can use our website, Austin Finance Online, in order to find information to add to your account and make everything um, as easy and responsive for you as possible. Um, so like she said, um, I'll just kind of be taking you through the website. So if you have any questions, feel free to, to come off mute and let me know. Um, my camera is here and the screen I'll be working on is over there. So bear with my profile. Okay, 
let me share my screen. Yes, and as you all come in, please um, mute yourselves and uh, turn your videos off if possible. All right, so hopefully you guys can see this now. This is Austin Finance Online. Um, my screen's a bit big, but when you come through, you'll usually see this top portion here. Austin Finance Online is the city site for all of our financial information. We try to be as transparent as possible. Um, so in here, you can come and look at our checkbook and see who we've made payments to. Um, under procurement, you can search out our active or expiring contracts, which I'll take you guys through that after we register. Um, you can also look at solicitations, which the 1230 session tomorrow will touch upon. Um, what we're going to look at today is actually registering as a vendor and then how we do those searches that can kind of help us grow our business. So from this main page, um, the easiest way to start registering, if you haven't already, is to go to create account. So this button is going to be at the top of every page, uh, as will the sign in button for after you've already registered. So when you click create account, it's going to take you right to this basic user information section. Um, mine has populated, but yours probably won't. Um, so you'll come in here and this is information about you as the user who will be logging in. So it's just like if you had to create a password and user ID for any website. Um, it'll ask for your first and last name. You'll have to populate your email, your phone number. And then you'll need to provide a unique username and password. So the username and password, I'm going to make new ones for this. Um, these have to be between six and 24 characters. And you can use either letters or numbers and some symbols. Um, but that character max and, and minimum are very important. And they do have to be the same. So um, sometimes get people get hung up here. If you do, just delete them both and keep going. All right, so once you've created that initial basic user account, um, it's going to take you to your user dashboard. And at this point, there won't be a lot of information listed here. Um, you basically just have a user account. There's, it's, you're not a vendor yet um, or something we call a customer for our hotel and tax program. So to keep going, you're gonna need to go to this section here. This is vendor registration. And there's a largest button that says start here. So you'll click that to keep going. And this information here tells you that as well. So if you get lost, you can read some of the prompts on the page. So once you click start here, that's where it really starts to take you through the registration. So your first step is to provide info about your business. Um, you're first going to choose what your business structure is. So this is going to be either sole proprietorship, partnership, et cetera. So you'll choose the one that matches best. And it's important to go ahead and do this field first because it's going to update the other fields based on what we provide. So for instance, if I'm a sole proprietorship, then it's going to let me know that I need my first and last name and then my business name if I have one. Whereas if I had a corporation, then it lets me know just to provide my legal or company name. And then again, I have the option of adding an alias or DBA. <coughs> so today I'm going to be a sole proprietorship. So I'll put in my first and last name and then the name of my company. All right, next I would need to provide an EIN or my social security number. Um, we recommend that you provide an EIN, even if you are a sole proprietorship and you're reporting your taxes under your social, it's, um, it's just, 
I don't know, cleaner to have an EIN um, for your business purposes. And it's also required of th for things like HUB certification. Um, so you would go to the IRS and, and request one. Okay, your next point is going to be to upload your W-9 form. I'm actually going to skip that so I can show you guys what happens if you don't do that here. Um, so we'll come back to that in a bit. Moving on, we'll provide information about whether or not we're certified somewhere else. So I'm, I'm not. Um, but we can also provide our gender and ethnicity. And this is kind of your first step if you're interested in becoming certified, which if you're eligible, there's no reason not to. There's some paperwork you would have to gather, but it really can help your business and get you more exposure to other, um, to other companies as well as to the city. So you would provide your gender and your ethnicity. And then if you're a veteran or disabled or a city of Austin employee, you would check the appropriate box. Um, so I'll go ahead and do that now. Now, um, if you're just starting your business and you're planning to be certified through the city and also through the state, I recommend that you start with our process because you'll have to fill out this application and fill out the certification application, but then our small and minority business resource department will um, let the state know if your company is hub eligible, so it will save you all of the application process to the state. Now, some people have already gotten their state um, certification, and if that's the case, we actually look for that ourselves um, in financial services. So if you're already HUB certified, as soon as you go through and register, we'll pull that information in, um, and that will also help you get notifications of opportunities. All right, and that's the gist of what this says. So next, if you're um, a service disabled veteran business, um, you could check that as well. Um, and then if your business is certified as an LGBT business, you can also check if you're eligible for that. Once you've filled everything in, you're just going to hit save changes. And next, it'll take you through the address section. Um, now, this is a lot of steps, so I did upload in the chat um, a presentation that can guide you through it if you're doing it later. Um, for this address section, you'll need to provide a sales and a payment address. So your sales address is going to be the address and contact that we notify of um, procurement opportunities, so opportunities to get um, purchase orders and contracts, solicitations. Um, your payment address is going to be the address that we send checks to. Um, so they can be different if you, you know, have a PO box for one, a home address for, for another, um, or, you know, they can be the same. And if they are, you'll just keep both of these checked and go through and add your information. And if you notice, it populates the name and the email from what you put in your user account. So if that's not correct, or if you want a different email, you would just come in and change it. So we'll do our street address, our city, our state. And then down here, if you are within Texas, you'll have to provide a county. Um, so there's Travis, but pretty much all the counties in Texas are there. If your one of these locations is outside of Texas, then you would be able to skip that field. All right, and then it pulls in the phone number as well. If you want to provide an alternate phone number, you can, as well as your fax information. But um, we do have plans to phase faxes out because it's 2021. All right, we also have the option of giving your e your notification preference. Um, it's going to default to email, and even if you were to choose fax here, we would email you as well. You would just get two. All right, once you were ready with this, you would say save and continue. Um, and one of the ways you can op optimize how you're notified is with that address section. So once we finish the registration, I'll go back and show you guys how to maintain and update that. 
All right, this third step is to provide NICS codes. So these are industry codes. So whichever industry your company aligns in. Um, you can kind of drill down through these to find the right one, but I find it easiest to use this search at the top. So whenever you're searching on this website, you want to make the initial search as general as possible, kind of um, shorten words where you can, and also um, try to leave any punctuation out. Um, that comes more into play when we're looking at commodities. But let's see, if I search for cater, All right, so it pulls up caterers. So kind of the nature of these searches is if I had typed in catering, it would have told me there weren't any. So um, keep those verb forms to the, the root word. All right, I'll go ahead and check that. And I can hit save and continue, but if I had other areas that I was interested in, um, I think in the session this morning, someone said that they were representing two companies. Um, so I could go in and add additional ones as I needed to. I'm gonna hit save and continue here. And this takes us to what we call commodities. So these are NIGP commodities. It's the National Institute for Government Procurement. And these are the commodity codes used by the city and the state um, and some other um, government agencies as well. And these are the codes that are super important to your account. Um, so some people go through and maybe they get distracted, they have to step away from the registration and come back later. Um, no matter what you do, you want to get to this step and add codes, because even if you don't finish, even if you never finish, as long as you have an email address in here and your commodity codes, we will notify you when opportunities arise. Um, so make sure you get to this step at least. Now in this search, there are some places where this lookup is good. So I'll, no, I'll try cater again and see what I get. Okay, so it's giving me everything with the word cater anywhere in it, so I get a lot of caterpillar things as well. Um, one thing to note with commodities is that anything that's a service will start with the number nine. So if your main business is providing a service, then adding codes that start with anything but nine won't really help you. So that helps me this sense area because I'm looking for catering so I can go all the way down to the nines and add the codes I need. Now I can add both of these just by checking the box but one thing I want to show you is if I leave this one off and just add the seven digit one I'm going to say save and continue searching this time. So it took me to the list of registered commodities in my account now. And if you notice, I have the seven digit one that I selected, but it went ahead and gave me the five as well, because they're all kind of connected, they're structured together. So they're saying, if you do catering services, you probably want to know about, you know, concessions or general catering, or even just, um, how the commodity codes are selected are based on what city of Austin employees choose. So we wouldn't want you to add the seven digit code and then have an employee use the five and you not get notified. So with this, we kind of try to help out a little bit. Now, if I wanna add more codes, I'll just come in to add commodities. All right, and the drill down in the commodity section can be quite useful. So um, they have this option of using the drill down lookup. So I'll click the button or I could have clicked the link. And so this will kind of guide me through which kinds of codes I wanna use. So I have um, either goods or services. So let's say I provide services. And then I know some people um, are working in the construction area. So in this case, you could choose construction. And it breaks it down to class. So you would choose which type you did. Maybe you do general. All right, and so then what it gives me here are all of the commodity codes under that general construction um, class. So then I can go through this entire list and check out all the ones that apply to me. So 
I don't know. I don't know how to do any of these things, but I can check them and I'll get notified. Um, this is where commodities are a little bit different for financial services and for the small and minority business resource department. Um, you can add any codes you want um, that you want to be notified on, and that's allowed. Um, purchasing and financial services will send you those notifications. If you then go on to become certified, the small and minority business resource department will only certify you for codes where you have um, an expertise. Um, so they'll that's a part of what you'll post, uh, provide in your application and they'll review that. Um, so it's entirely possible to have more codes than you're actually certified in. And there's cases where I recommend that, especially in this in this construction area because maybe you want to be notified when the primes are notified um, instead of just when your codes are used anyway once i've selected all the different ones that i care about i can come down to the bottom i'm still in the middle of the registration process so um, i have the option to continue searching or to just continue my registration All right, and so I did this on purpose. If we look down here, we have our memorandum of agreement, but we don't actually have anywhere to submit the registration. And that's because we've missed a couple of steps. Um, and I wanted to show you all this because we get calls about this. And so I wanted to make you all aware of how to fix this if it happens to you. So there's two things we need to do, and it tells us at the top of the page. The first is we need to supply that W-9 form. And the second is we need to confirm our email address. So um, I can go to my email and confirm. And I think I did it off screen. It'll show us on screen. So it lets me know that that's done. Um, if I come back to this main page and refresh, now I see I just I have just one more thing to complete, and that is uploading that W-9 form. So I'll go back into our business section. All right, and here is where I will upload the W-9. Now, if I had like walked away and then I came back, when I logged in, it would take me to this page and I would go to the business section over here to add my W-9. Okay. So I'll just um, go to where it is on my computer. And if you're registering on a phone or a tablet, you we do accept um, pictures. So you could just upload a picture there. All right, and then I'll go ahead and save changes at the bottom. And so now it took me back to step five and it gives me that I agree and submit button. So I'll go ahead and click that. All right, and it lets me know that I'm pending approval. But as I mentioned before, as long as you have um, an email and those commodity codes, you'll get notified. And um, as long as you have a user account, you would be able to submit responses through our e-response program here in Austin Finance Online. And that's something I'll be touching on in tomorrow's session at 1230 as well. All right, so from our account here, um, we can come over and look at the different sections that we have. So I had talked about addresses and how you can kind of utilize them to make sure that you're notified. Um, let me go back over there. So when we send out notifications of solicitation opportunities, we're going to notify any and every sales contact you have. And we're also going to notify your primary contact. So if you remember the username. So one thing I did when I was registering is I did something we don't always recommend, and I use my personal email here. Um, now, if I'm the only person in my company, that's fine. But if I have a team, then I it's better to use like a team email that everyone can um, access. So if I go in and edit that, I can change this to my group's email and hit save and continue. 
And now we'll make sure that the whole group gets notified. Um, but maybe I'm also like a little bit of a control freak and I still wanna make sure that I get those. Um, I can come in here and um, add a second listing so that someone else will be notified. So the way to do that, if I only have one address, I'm gonna come over here and say duplicate address. It copied everything else the same. But then I'm like, it's not enough that my city of Austin email and the group email is gonna get it. I wanna get it at home too. So I'm gonna add my personal email too. And now I've covered a few bases in case something goes wrong. So I have to check which type I want and I want cells here. Cells is who gets the solicitation opportunities. And then I'll come to the bottom and hit save continue. And you can do this for as many people um, and emails that you want to be notified. And I recommend that you do that because if something goes wrong with one and you don't get it and you don't submit your response in time, you're kind of out of luck. Once it closes, it's just closed. So cover all the bases that you can. All right. So that's those notifications. Another thing you wanna be aware of, if we come over here and look at our commodities, we can see that we've added a few, but maybe there's more, maybe there's a way we could find others. Um, a good place to kind of search out for commodity codes are in some of the databases we have in here. So let's start with contracts. And before I move into that, I haven't, um, I can't see the chat. Has anyone had questions or anything? So far, it's been, <laughs> I think everyone's maybe taking notes and listening. So, so okay. far, I have questions, but all right. Happening? Well, that's fine. Okay, so let's move over to this contracts area. So we can come in here and look at the city's active contracts. All right, and in this section, we can do a search to see what's available that way, or we can kind of drill down through different types um, of uh, contracts, the different contract categories. I lost my words for a second. Um, I'm going to keep up with the theme and kind of search for cater and see what comes up. And this is searching all of our contracts and we have a lot, so it, it can take a minute sometimes. All right, so it's gonna pull up everything we have active. Um, a CT is, um, it's like a central purchase order at the city of Austin. So it'll just be for, for something over $5,000 that was a one-time purchase. Um, so if we look at this one, it says catering and concessions upgrade, but it's probably um, like a concessions stand or outpost because they were doing HVAC there. Um, master agreements are more like contracts that can be used um, over a period of time. So I don't know, just some background of what you're looking at. So let's see, we can come through here. We have catering and concessions for our convention center. That's what ACCD stands for. So we can see who has that. And right now it looks like Lovey has it. We have another one for the police academy. We can see who has that. And then we have a couple for our pro lodge and then down here for the alternative care site. Um, so if we take a look at that, we can see what the vendor list was for those. And we can also see which commodity codes they use. So they use that 96115, which is what we added. So it's kind of a safe bet there. Now, maybe we wanna take a look at this contract to see um, when they're gonna go out to bid it again. So over here on the right, we can click view contract. Okay, and this is gonna give us some information. So um, we can see the begin and the expiration date, the planned expiration date. We can see how much time has um, lapsed in these um, charts and how much they've spent. So they actually haven't spent very much here um, based on how much they could spend. 
We could even look at a list of the orders. So it looks like they've placed one order so far. And then from here, if we felt like one of these um, companies was our competitor, we can go and look at their vendor data. So maybe I want to look up this Murphy's Deli one. So I just clicked view vendor data right here. And it can take a minute. This one can be a bit slow. So while we're waiting, I can just show you this section. Um, when they're available, this one's an emergency contract, so it's it's a bit um, special. But when it's available, you can actually view the actual contract and kind of see what the terms were for that. And um, this is especially useful if you know it's going to be rebid soon and you want to take a look at what the previous vendor agreed to. Um, you can also go and look at the actual RCA. So that's the request for council action. And that's um, the review that council took in order to approve it. Hmm, I'm impatient, so I'm going to search for this another way in a minute. We'll get back. I want to show you one that actually has this info. All right, so let's take a look at this um, contract for the convention center. All right, so this one they've used quite a bit. Um, one thing I want to point out is this talks about a planned expiration date. It's hard to tell from any of the information that is given to you, but sometimes um, master agreements, so are these MAs we have here, will have renewal periods. So the initial contract term will be a certain length of time, and then they'll have optional renewal periods that the city and the vendor can agree to. So when you see a planned expiration date, um, feel free to call my team. Um, the number is over here. The, this will get you to us as well. Or it's also in that presentation I uploaded. Um, and you can call or email and ask us if there are any renewal periods, because that'll give you an idea of whether or not it's really going to be um, expiring on the date listed or if there's actually some additional options just to, to help you play it out. Okay, and this is one that does have that contract. So if I click it, it's just gonna open that up for us. And these contracts, um, they're redacted, so they don't have anything sensitive, but you can come in and take a look at them. Um, I don't know, this one, once it loads is, over 700 pages, but there are some others that are more manageable. I probably should have chosen a shorter one to show y'all. So yeah, it's it's massive, but as you go through, you can um, take a look at what's been going on. So it includes all their amendments, everything about it. I mean, um, government agencies are subject to open records, so um, we try to make it available beforehand where we can. All right, so this is how you could look up those contracts. Um, let me go back to the main. All right, so we can also come in here and just click through, like I said. So maybe we wanna see like which you know, what our current contracts are for construction. All right, and so this is just going to, to narrow it down to all of our construction projects. Um, and this can be useful, especially if the contract um, doesn't expire in two days. Um, so some, for some of the ones that have a little ways to go, you could come in here and look at these and see what they're trying to do. And sometimes the primes 
you know, need new people as the contract goes on, like they'll have their, their initial people that they put on their compliance plan. Um, I think that'll be touched upon a little bit in tomorrow evening session, but sometimes things happen and they need to replace them. So it, it never hurts to reach out and kind of network with those primes. I think I am choosing all the ones to look at. This one is taking a while. But basically by coming through here, it's gonna show you that screen we just saw that um, told us who was on the contract um, and what information was related to it or not. Okay, I'm not gonna try to open one of those again. Um, usually it's much better. I'm, I don't know what's going on. Um, I came here, because I wanted to talk about how you find commodities. And so this is the one we were looking at a little bit ago, the levy contract. And at the bottom, we could see which commodities were used. And I had talked about how you can look at the vendors and see what commodities they have. So the Murphys didn't load as nicely as we would have liked it to, but we can come over here to searches and look for them a different way. So this under, I didn't talk it through, but under the vendor section, we have searches, and it just gives us a series of things that we can search for that might be useful to us. Um, so if we scroll through, we get vendor search, and we can come in and search by business name. And so in this field, I'm just going to type in Murphy. Again, I said, if you can, leave out any punctuation, and then I'm going to hit find. Um, and the reason why I say to leave out punctuation is because if you don't get it exact, it won't return the information. We need to update our search criteria. Um, so I remember from the contract that their parent name was Tex Americana. So I am going to click on them. And this page loads much faster. So we can come in here and see which codes they felt were important to add. So they added all of the specific foods. Um, I wouldn't recommend that if you're in restaurant services and unless you can just supply um, those foods themselves. Um, so if you can just supply like Doritos for chips, then maybe you would choose chips, things like that. Okay. We also have this and I'm back in that searches page. So we have this commodity history search. So this is if you wanna see if you've added a code and you wanna know how the city has paid for it in the past, because um, our contract search was just looking at existing contracts, but maybe we wanna see that past business. Um, so we can type cater here, or if you had just copied and pasted the code from um, that section of your account, you could load that in and hit find. Well, that's not right. Okay. Well, now this is giving me Caterpillar stuff. Hmm. So, <laughs> This isn't working the way it's supposed to. Um, I will get my team on that. But as you can see from what did come up, um, it's showing us what the commodity was and the purchase order and how much we spent on it. So you can kind of see that past information. It, it should show up more. Maybe I need to do. No. Hmm. Okay. I will, when you come to look at this, it will work. I promise you, I will get that taken care of. All right. So I think those are the main areas. Another thing that's nice is this expiring contracts one. So when we were looking at some of those contract searches, especially on construction, we could see the ones that was like expiring in two days and three days, et cetera. So this list will just tell you everything that's scheduled to expire soon. Um, and if you see something in here that you're interested in, it's kind of a good time to check it out. So here we have, Mm, which one do we want? 
So here is a construction one. Okay, and it won't open from here, but let me copy this number because maybe these serving services are something I can provide. So from here, I'm gonna go back to my active contract search and plug in that contract number that I pasted. And give it a little bit of time. Or a lot of time. Thanks, Reve. This is great information. Oh, no problem. Let me try in Chrome. Oh, see, it's having issues. Okay. Well, from that list. Oh, it opened Chrome. All right, let me look at a different one instead then. All right, so this contract here is, well, this one is also for ABIA for the airport, is also gonna be on that expired list. So I could come and search for it here. And the thing you'll want to be looking for is that um, the commodity codes that they use in the contract are the ones that you have in your account. Um, because more often than not, when they go to renew it, they're going to use the exact same codes they used before. Um, There's some instances when new codes have been added that they'll add those as well, but they'll definitely solicit the people um, with the previous codes as well. So you'll wanna make sure that you have those so you get the notifications if you didn't have them already. Okay, so from back in this contract page, we'll just go to the bottom. We'll see which codes they use. Um, and this, this is kind of a good example because this is very vague. Um, so in this case, we may want to actually look at the contract to see what this was for to see if we were interested in it. Um, but once we determine that we were, we can copy this code. And then I'm still logged in as my, my vendor self. So if you ever need to actually get to your account from any of these sections, go to the top right hand corner where your username is and hover over it and it'll open this box. If you go home, it'll take you back to your user dashboard. So now I can come down to commodities and over on the right, I'll add that additional commodity. Um, now we could drill down to find it. It was a five digit code though. Um, I'm just gonna paste it in from where we copied it. And the reason why I brought that up is because five digits are more general than the seven. So this five digit is for telecommunication services, but we can see some other types. So radio frequency, um, we have telecommunication, telecommunication services again, we have satellite telephone services. So there may be things in here that you also wanna add that are more specific to what you do. Um, or honestly, if you can do all of it, you can check them all and then just hit save. And it said save and continue registration. That's just because the account hasn't been approved yet. So once it's been approved, when you save, it'll take you back to your list of commodities. All right, um, is there anything that anyone wants to see or, or know how to search for? That's kind of the end of, of my demo. Hey, Ravi, do you know, um, is the bid tabs information in your area? Like if you wanted to see where they were and like some of the past bids, is that within your scope? Um, it is, it's gonna be covered in the session tomorrow, but I can, I can show that. 
Um, so it's just under solicitations and then bid tabs. Um, tomorrow I'm going to go through how you look at all of this session. So that'll be at the, the 1230 session tomorrow. Okay, thanks. That's good. I'll look for that then. Thank okay, you. cool. Um, Hello, I mean, th yeah. my name is Brittany. Um, so I'm currently already a registered um, vendor. Um, I've had some information that I needed to update on my account. And for some reason, when I go to my account, um, it gives you the option to click on the edit button. But when you go to update the information, um, it doesn't let you type it, type it in. And then um, like it'll just let you click the save button. So I'm not able to update my information. Is that in the, well, what information is it? Is it like your legal name or? Right. So, um, so when I first, um, when I first became a vendor, I was a sole proprietor, but since then I've become, um, um, LLC. Okay. Um, and so, so those types of changes you can't make through the website, um, cause we have to verify that, um, what the information that you're providing is valid and that it doesn't impact any contracts or orders. So the only way for us to do that is for you to contact us and then we'll send you some forms to fill out and, and update your account. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, phenomenal job. Brave, just love it. And if, yeah, this now, since we have a little bit of time um, left over, you all can come off mic and camera if you'd like. Um, I think the chat's kind of retired for the, <laughs> it's just me in there. I'm talking to myself. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, and I'll, uh, let me see if I can unpin it and we'll go. And we have about, the series is until 6.30. We can call it early or we can use this time to, um, while you have Ms. Reve, <laughs> uh, to continue asking questions. Yes. Hey, Reve, I had one question and that was if you could drop your presentation in the chat again, cause I don't, I couldn't see it. I guess I didn't scroll back far enough. Oh, sure, sure. Thank you. Awesome. Yes, and yeah, what were you about to say? Nothing. Okay, um, so, so tomorrow, like Ms. Purvey was saying, she'll be here uh, for the 12.30, 12.30, um, October 27th, Wednesday, 12.30, how to find a local bid. And I'll put the series um, schedule in the chat. And I'm so proud of y'all. It's Tuesday, it's 5.30, these 12.30, 5.30s. Y'all are making them. Great job. Um, we'll have Ms. Reve, and then uh, on Wednesday at 5.30, we'll have, we'll have How to Certify Your Business um, with Ms. Sandra Ramirez with SMBR, the Small Minority Business Resource Team. Uh, those are going to be our, our 12.30 and 5.30. So a lot of great information coming your way, and these sessions are being recorded, so you all will eventually get to replay this or reference it again and again uh, in the in the in the near future. Um, okay, great, we got that in the chat. And let me get the. But yeah, maybe we'll give it like another minute or two for questions. And then we'll go eat. This is a uh, Corlin with Foundry House Media. I wanted to know, like, I saw some of the categories as far as like how deep do the subcategories go in each section? It's like telecom, like, and what, and is it? I guess you have to really get down in there and to see what it is. But which of the um, sections, like, you know, are built out? Say for somebody in the communications or media industry or marketing uh you know because i saw them was like wow like but those are just general headings and then you can deep dive once you get in with the codes right is that correct yes that is right um so let me share again because i can i can look up marketing itself 
So for the commodity codes, it kind of varies um, which ones have more to kind of drill down in. But if we go through services, when it says professional and non-professional, it's talking about certifications with the state. So professional is going to be mostly architecture and engineering. Um, we're typically going to want non-professional here. Um, and it's from this level that we're able to really break it down. So these are all of our different services areas. Um, I feel like marketing is under miscellaneous. All right, I know there's one under consulting as well. So if we drill down under consulting, then this is kind of the lowest level that it goes through is all of the different types of consulting. And then we could find and check all the ones that best apply to us. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so, and they're all gonna have kind of this many levels to break it down. Oh, wow, okay, cool, cool. And the nice thing about that drill down is when you do find them all, you just check all the ones you want. Um, I think when you're first starting out, it's better to check more rather than less, because if you find out you don't want a certain notification, you can just uncheck it later. Thank you. Really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Great. Just trying to skim the chat, make sure we no one left behind. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. I think. Uh, I think we're good. Anything else going once, going twice? Um, we appreciate Miss Reve's stamina. <laughs> you will be with us tomorrow. <laughs> the only person that's doing a back to back. Um, uh, but yes, you are. Um the real MVP, as they say, we, uh, and we'll see you, we'll see you all tomorrow if there's, if there's nothing else. And there should be the Eventbrite link in the chat as well, if you guys want to sign up for more sessions, but this is the same Zoom link um, for the rest of the week, so. Oh yeah, and save the chat, oh yes. So uh, also for your information, uh, there's a cool way to save the chat, if you don't know already, there are three dots, um, at least from the desktop, Top version. I'm not too sure about the mobile version um, or your phone, but if in the corner of your chat box, there's three dots. If you click it and scroll up, you might see um, a section where it says save chat and you, you'll click that and it'll, it'll give you everything you need for today. Everything that was put in the chat, of course. Um, but yes, uh, may the force be with you all. And we'll see you tomorrow at 12.30 for how to find a local bid. Have a great evening, everyone. See you later. <laughs>